Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. In this video, I'd like to talk about lung fibrosis or lung scarring in systemic sclerosis. This is a great comment that I received from Sadia. Uh, she says the following. I'm suffering from systemic sclerosis lung disease from 2018, so you know five years ago, and my situation is getting worse. I have breathing problems, and my lungs have scars, and I'm on oxygen all the time. So it, this is a fantastic comment because it addresses a lot of the issues that can happen in systemic sclerosis when it also affects the lungs. Now I have another video on the channel, I'll try to link in the description, but basically it's a condition that affects mostly the skin, it leads to skin thickening, but that can also affect the lungs as well. So you may get scarring, thickening of the lung tissue. So the lungs become hardened and this can be sometimes progressive. And I've talked about this before, but there are two main things that can happen here. One of them is that basically you can get lung fibrosis or the lung scarring that I've been mentioning now, or you can have issues with oxygen that are related to the scarring or completely unrelated. So let's cover them both a little bit and hopefully this would be a helpful explanation for you. Now, lung scarring is actually fairly common in systemic sclerosis. A lot of patients who suffer with scleroderma systemic sclerosis can get lung fibrosis. Now, that fibrosis can be progressive, but the good, good news is that there are some therapies that can slow it down. The problem is it doesn't cure the problem. It doesn't cure the scarring. It doesn't reverse the scarring. We don't have yet medication that can do that. Hopefully in the future, we'll be able to fix scarred lungs, but at the moment we are not in that situation yet. So we have one medication that's approved in systemic sclerosis lung fibrosis, which is called nintedonib. Now nintedonib is a medication that slows down the scarring process, so it buys you time until the lungs become less functional than they were before. And in addition to that, your rheumatologist who is treating the systemic sclerosis may actually prescribe some other treatments and in combination with the anti-scarring, anti-fibrotic medication, you may actually get the stabilization of the lung problem, which is really, really helpful in these cases when systemic sclerosis is affecting the lungs. So it's really important, I think, in your case to discuss with your doctor whether there's any therapy that's available to you for the scars in your lungs, specifically if you're suffering with systemic sclerosis. It may be that you are not eligible for the medication for a number of reasons. Sometimes people do not tolerate the medication, it's contraindicated, may not be the right approach. Your lung scarring may actually not be progressive and there may be other issues causing your breathlessness, but it's important to discuss these things. The second part is really to discuss about oxygen needs. And in systemic sclerosis, there can be two things that can be happening, why people may require oxygen. So one would be, that the scars are really severe. The lungs have been really badly damaged by the systemic sclerosis. The fibrosis has led to a lot of hardening of the lung tissue and it's not really able to do its function. So the lungs are not working as they should. So that's when you may need the oxygen. But what may happen as well is that you may be developing something called pulmonary hypertension. Now pulmonary hypertension is just basically high blood pressure between the lungs and the heart. So the, the artery correcting the heart, the right side of the heart to the lungs, it has high pressure. So that's something we cannot measure directly, not as if you were putting uh, one of these blood pressure cuffs on our arms and measuring the blood pressure. That's something that can be estimated with an ultrasound of the heart or some more invasive procedures. But it can happen in systemic sclerosis completely unrelated to the lung scarring. So that's something really interesting, but it's something that needs to be addressed. And oxygen in these cases is a form of treatment, is a form of treatment for the condition because it reduces that pulmonary hypertension. So getting enough oxygen into the lungs actually reduces the strain that's put on the heart. Pulmonary hypertension leads to a lot of strain on the heart. It leads to heart complications and other problems. The circulation of the blood through the lungs is not good. So you're not taking up oxygen from the air as you should. But if you are breathing in extra oxygen, which can be given through a little cannula, initially only as needed, only on exertion, so you don't have to necessarily use it all the time, it can help reduce the rate of worsening of heart disease and other problems of the body. So it's a form of treatment in itself. And of course, in later stages of the condition, you may need oxygen all the time, but it's not necessarily that common. It can take many, many years to develop to such a stage. And I do understand that psychologically going on an oxygen cylinder or concentrator can be difficult, but it's really important. If it prevents further damage to the heart, the rest of the body, it can be helpful in this situation. So just to conclude, for systemic sclerosis lung disease, it's really important to consider whether the scarring is progressive because there may be therapies that can slow it down. And if you do need oxygen based on your oxygen levels, potentially that can be helpful to reduce further complications in the future. 
Hopefully this was a good explanation. If you have a need for further clarification, leave them in the comments, leave a comment in the section below, and I'll try to answer in future videos. All the best and good health.